Okay, so your head's up to this longer podcast. It's all about beliefs. I'm going to show you some of my old beliefs. We're going to talk about your beliefs and how beliefs can change your world. And it's not difficult. It really isn't difficult. You're going to learn so much in this. I'm sure you are. Anyway, have a listen. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal development unplugged. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I can't do it. These are the type of beliefs that I find with my clients than when we have an issue. They're the beliefs that are just below the surface. And you have to think, are they useful? Because here's the thing about beliefs. Beliefs can be absolutely awesome. Do you remember the five-minute quickie with that belief from David Coggins? There was a negative, I'm not gifted. But the positive side of it is, I'm driven. I'm driven. It's one we said, well, what would happen if we took that belief on when we're dealing with issues or dealing with anything, really? You know, a goal, a thing that we wanted. It'd be awesome, wouldn't it? That would be useful. The others are sort of useful. Sort of useful because they have an intention, and we'll talk about intentions shortly, but they do have a positive intention, or they did when they were first formed. And it's anything about a belief, I think, is one of the most powerful things that you have and the most powerful things that you can change if you need to. And by the way, how are you doing? It's Paul here. I got into that a bit quick. You see, going back to these beliefs, beliefs are, in effect, our morals. They create our morals, or our, moral, our morals create our beliefs. I'm not quite sure how they go through. They're the things that create our inner boundaries, I guess. They're our our own personal rules for life. What we know as being right or wrong, or what we feel is right, and what we feel is wrong. And when they have an I in front of them, they're effectively setting our identity. And sometimes, as I say, they can be really powerful and empowering and create wonderful changes in your life. But if they have that, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, which is quite weird, because sometimes you know, people don't generally say that, not out, out loud, but it's when you go behind the feeling, that negative feeling they have, that's where the belief is just underneath, and that's when it comes out. And even though they say, you know, people wouldn't believe me, if, you know, the, my friends wouldn't believe this belief of me, but it's, you know, It is solid, right inside. It's me. Well, it is you, as long as you want it, as long as it's useful. Because I say, it was useful. It had a positive intent the very first time that it was created, because your unconscious mind was doing something for you. You see, I can remember my own inner work. And do you remember? I had that belief, the belief that said, I can't do this because I'll get hurt. Now, when I discovered that, it was so far from my conscious awareness, I had to read it quite a few times. But as I read it, it was, it seems to make sense. That's why I'm not doing things. You know, there's that positive intention of keeping me from hurt because I'm having this negative belief saying, you know, I can't do this. Because if I did it and I failed, I'd get hurt. But the thing is, the things I really wanted to do, the things I, I felt sort of that I could do, but it's like that little, you know, some people call it self-sabotage, and I don't believe that. I don't believe it's self-sabotage in, in the way that we just put obstacles in our way for no reason. But this is one of the reasons. So our unconscious mind saying, yeah, but I want to protect you. I want to keep you safe. But how safe did I feel when I wasn't doing the things that I really felt I ought to be doing, I could be doing, and I could be making a difference? I didn't feel safe at all. In fact, I didn't. And how hurt did I feel? I felt bloody hurt. It was an inner hurt that I wasn't living up to my own expectations. I wasn't as good as I thought I could be. 
And in fact, I wasn't even trying to be as good as I could be. You know, when I work on the other sides of my life, the things that I feel really confident in, it's not a case of trying to do things to a level. I want to exceed that level and I don't care. I know I'm going to succeed. And even if I don't, I'm going to create something really good. So even the good is going to be good. And if I aim for the, you know, set that bar really high and I go for it, sometimes I'll clear the bar, sometimes I'll hit the bar. But that bar is so high that I'm creating something really good. I'm doing something really good. I, you know, just helping people change their lives or doing something for me, it really does work. But this thing, you know, this real conflict going on because I was feeling hurt and I didn't know why. And then it all began to, you know, come to light. And this is the thing about these negative beliefs. When they come to light, it's as if your unconscious mind is saying, well, this is what I've been trying to do. Come on, Cluffy. This was, I was trying to help you. Now it's up to me consciously to show my unconscious mind that it's now in conflict with itself. Because yes, I don't want to be hurt. But I also want to do that other stuff. And if I access all my skills, I don't think I'll ever be hurt. I'll learn instead. And that's the difference. I won't be failing. If I don't hit that, you know, jump past that high bar or hit that bar, I'll be able to learn and then clear it with ease. But there's nothing in, I can't get hurt when I learn. I might get disappointed in the case, think, oh, go. But I'll just go, wow, now I know how to do it. And I also know how not to do it in those uh, that context, those circumstances. That's a great thing to have. That's going to stop me getting hurt again. So you have to take those, you know, chances. But if you take chances with, with all your, your wherewithals, all your skills, all your, you know, accessing all those resources, the positive emotions, positive beliefs and then using the positive uh, uh, and empowering behaviors that, that all align you can't get hurt can I and I came to this thing saying and I came to this thing within like a new belief I'm okay it's okay and I got that from somebody else which is how beliefs can change because it just seemed to be seemed to ring a bell with me seemed to resonate does it resonate with you you know, would something like, I'm okay, it's okay. Would that resonate? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, another belief I've, I've been noticing is coming out of my mouth when I'm thinking about things. Well, you know, I'm not going to die. So come on, let's do it. I'm not, you know, it's not a life or death situation. So, you know, what is a bit of embarrassment? I'm not going to die from embarrassment. So let's go do that thing. I mean, Here's an example, and it's where I got that belief from. I'm okay, it's okay. I was working with this lad a few years ago now, and he was uh, separated from his wife and children, but amicably now, and they, they arranged that they would, he would have his two daughters at weekends, and they were teenage daughters. And they started to ask him some whether they were just goading him, see how far they could push him, I don't know. But they're asking me embarrassing questions. And he said, I really want to be able to speak to my, to my children. I really want to be part of their lives. But he said, every time they start asking questions, I, go, I get this weird emotion and I go and hide. I give them some money to go out downtown, do the pictures, to the cinema for the older people or the younger people. And I'm wasting this time. It's precious, but I can't do anything else. I keep getting this feeling. And we did some work around it. And he said, you know what? I keep getting this memory. This memory from a, you know, when I was about eight or nine, Paul. He said, um, I got beaten up by a couple of lads. Not badly. It didn't get any cuts and bruises and things like that. But they really, they scared me. And it's exactly the same type of feeling. of That's the same fear. But the thing is, two different contexts. One's getting beaten up, and the other one, this is my children. They're completely different, aren't they? And I just said, well, what belief did you have about yourself? Well, no, before I said that, I got there a different way. I said, and who did you tell? Who did you speak with? And he said, well, I didn't. I just 
went and hid. I said, what, like hiding in, going to the telly, going to your TV, going watching TV, instead of being with your, your two daughters. And he went, damn, it's exactly the same feeling, exactly the same behaviour. And I said, as you just noticed that feeling, what belief do you have about yourself? And he just said, I'm not strong enough. And that's what it was, I'm not strong enough. But it wasn't like, I'm not strong enough physically. It's just, I'm not strong enough to speak to people. Not strong enough to share. You know, share my concerns or share whatever. I'm just not strong enough. So what we did was, we worked on that belief. Because I knew it had a positive intention way back then. But now, it was in conflict because it was, he was actually needed and really wanted to speak with his daughters. And we did the belief change work really quickly. And some people say you can't change these core beliefs. But yeah, we did it really quickly because you can when they're no longer needed and they're in conflict with who you really are now. And it came out that the new belief was, I'm okay, it's okay. And I thought to myself, it just suddenly went inside me and thought, what a wonderful belief to have. And I said to him the next time I saw him, I said, how are you going with your daughters with that, that belief? He said, That's, do you know, Paul, it's such a simple belief that no one would actually believe the old belief that I'm not strong enough because I'm a big old strong boy and I, and, I, and I talk to people and all sorts of stuff. But in that context, I couldn't. But no one would believe that I'm not strong enough. But it was true. But now, I just know it's okay to talk to my daughters. And it's okay to say how I feel if they take it just beyond the boundary of my comfort. It's okay for me to say, hey girls, you know, you're embarrassing your dad. And they, he said, when I said that, they actually smiled and said, yeah, we're just ribbing your dad. And they cuddled him. But he said, just I changed his whole dimension of his life with, with a connection with his family. And where that's going to go, we always say, you never know how far the ripples of change will go. But they're going to go for, forever. And his children will pass that on because that's where we're going now, you see. Where do they come from? Where do these beliefs come from? Well, we know that just now from that story, they came from a particular event in his life. Pretty early on, where you're, you know, where you take on things pretty quickly. But think about it, even before that, because I don't know where my belief came from. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. It might have come from when I had my bit of black days, but I think it may be even before that. Because I, I remember not doing things where I really wanted to, or not showing myself, showing the real me. That's something I'm going to maybe have to look into, but at the moment it's gone, because I, I had to look way, way back to try to find my old belief about being hurt. In a book I'd written it down, in my, one of my journals, because I'd forgotten about it. And it was only this, the preparation for this podcast, that brought it back into my mind. But you see, where do beliefs come from? Let's dive a little deeper. First of all, I guess they just come from experiences, don't they? You have your own set of personal experiences. So they could be experiences from early on to right now. Because if that belief, I'm okay, it's okay, resonated with you, or just a story, or just that feeling of hurt, and I can't do this because I'll get hurt, my old negative belief, and that conflict it was creating in me, that might just resonate with you at the unconscious level and instantly change. Because that's the thing about beliefs. They can change at any time in your life. They can form any time in your life and change any time in your life. So any time in your personal experience, but also part of your personal experience, but listening to other people's experiences. You can form a belief that, well, if they believe that and I respect them, maybe that's a belief that I will take on uncritically. Think about it. I wonder, who are the people you're listening to? We talked about noise before, all the noise around, you know. And that noise is like the news. Maybe you hear news on the radio, the TV, newspapers, on the internet. You know, there's so much things like this fake news as well. I know so many people who have repeated things as a be they believed them. And it was then changing how they perceived the world. And it was through fake news. That's frightening, isn't it? Pretty scary. 
So you've got all this noise, all these experiences. You know, even people just telling us this is what what they experienced. How we can start to form our beliefs, because sometimes we we look for those. Well, not sometimes. I think what we when we have a belief, we tend to filter out the things that don't necessarily support that belief, but filter in the things that support that belief to make it stronger, because it's our belief. I mean, here's an experience I've had, and I bet you have too. Have you ever had a discussion with somebody about something you really believe in strongly? And in some way, the conversation's going the wrong way. You know, they're actually maybe arguing a little bit with you, but they're giving you information that really breaks down your belief, yet you argue even stronger because it's your belief, even though inside you might even feel you're wrong. In that instant, you've had that belief so long, who are they to take it away from you? Yeah, weird things, beliefs, because, and they do set our identity. But you see, the other thing, where else do you get these beliefs? Well, they said they set your morals and your values. Think of when we were really young, you know, the imprint age. Some people call it between the years zero and seven. Some say zero and five. Some say zero and three. But we're like a sponge in those early years, aren't we? We take things on uncritically. We take it on from, you know, if we take a belief from our parents, you know, they they would say things, say things at the dinner table, say things as you're doing things. And if they repeat it enough times, repetition, call it the mother of skill, but can make things permanent, and when you have that, where, did, where do you think they got them from? Where did that belief in them come from? Well, I'm going to guess a lot of those beliefs were imprinted in them when they were zero to three, zero, zero to seven, somewhere in that early age, from your grandparents, their mum and dad. And where did they get theirs from then? So we could be living our life with beliefs that are generations old. Now, some of them are going to be awesome, those real positive, empowering morals of right and wrong. Others can be so different now. I mean, the world is changing so quickly now, and the beliefs must change with them, I guess. But there's so many people, you you hear of stories that people are in relationships and getting hurt in a relationship, physically hurt, but they accept it because that was the experience that they had through their parents. Their parents were like that. And it was, well, they love each other. They must be because they're married. And this is how you show love until you find there's a better way. So all these things are so weird about beliefs, aren't they? And I think, also believe, we don't spend enough time thinking out. out of, I'm going to say that again, Paul. We don't spend enough time thinking about our beliefs because I guess they're below the surface, so they don't, we don't invite them to come up. We just do them. So, you know, if we're not careful, we're going to be living our lives based on a very small experience, percentage of our experience, but a large percentage of somebody else's experience. So, let's have a think. What would it be like if you started to explore what beliefs you have? Because the positive ones are the ones you want to really build upon, isn't it? The ones that support you in a lovely, positive way. But the ones which are no longer helping you, the ones which are in conflict, aren't they the ones we could change, let go of? I wonder, if you had a negative belief that in the past supported you but no longer does, is holding you back. Let's call it self-sabotaging. The words I hate, but there you go. We'll call it self-sabotaging. Stopping you, achieving what you really want. What would happen if you let them go? Mm. See, if you let them go, you think, well, there's a void, isn't there? Yeah, there is a void. But what happens to voids when we look to fill them with something empowering, where we give ourselves an example of an experience of ours that was totally positive. And think, what belief did I have then? That if I had it now in this other context, would support me? 
would it give me the same intention? I think you find it probably would, because in that other context, you probably felt totally safe. So totally, um, let me think, totally confident with high self-esteem, with just knowing that you're totally safe. Because you don't think about any of those, you, because you must have them. So I wonder if you want to take up like a little challenge in a moment or a few minutes when you've got the time. Just to think. We can do positive and negative, and I like to do the negatives first and end up on the positive. So there's an obvious reason for that. Finish on a positive, yeah, feel good. But think of maybe some times when you have inverted commas or speech those speech marks people do self-sabotage something didn't go right you knew you wanted it but it just didn't happen think of the feeling that you had then now when you're doing this i don't want you to start on things which are mega 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 let's get into this gently think of something quite gentle but is negative what what didn't happen what didn't you do maybe you didn't commit to something. You really wanted to meet somebody or do something, but you backed away. It was a goal that you wanted to start, but you didn't quite follow through. What was the emotion present? Now, you can label it if you want, or you can just notice it. I never like to accept these type of emotions. I like to acknowledge them. Because accepting them to me is making things that they're, or telling things that you're, they're okay. Acknowledging them just says, you're there. Okay, you're there. I acknowledge you. But I want to change you. So when you acknowledge that feeling, just notice where it is in your body. Maybe just spend a moment or two just noticing the quality of that feeling. When I say the quality, well, is it in your chest? If it's in your chest, where exactly in your chest is it? Is it below the surface? Is it in the middle or nearer the back? How big is it? Does it have maybe a temperature? Does it pulse? Does it vibrate? Does it resonate? What does it do? Does it have a colour? And you don't have to be, you know, really deep on this because when you say, does it have a colour? I wonder what colour it it would have if it had a colour. And a colour will come to mind. It just gives you something that you... It's like bringing that focus of awareness now into this one particular feeling. We're not doing anything with it. We're not trying to make it bigger, trying to make it smaller. We're just acknowledging it and saying thank you. I know you did something really, you know, you were always trying to do something for me. But I wonder, what's the belief that goes with this feeling? What is the belief that makes this feeling so? And allow it to come out. Just write it on your on your on your journal. It's normally something like, I'm not or I can't. And when it's there in plain sight, you can look at it and go, well, that's pretty awesome. Awesome in a way that you and your unconscious mind are now really getting this close communication. And go, I can maybe understand how that was protecting me, or was keeping me safe, or it was keeping me from something. But it really isn't working anymore. I wonder... What would be a a positive belief? So if you, my unconscious mind, could realise it's no longer working, there's a conflict here. And I want you to keep the intention. But I wonder, if you were to go through all my positive experiences, what belief would you put in its place? Because this belief is no longer working. Now, that might come up as a a sentence that you're going to write down, like, it's okay, I'm okay. Or it might be, nothing comes at all. But just notice how that feeling begins to maybe dissipate and fade away. And then maybe notice as you think about a goal similar to the old goal or the old context of happening in the future sometime, not a a specific time in the future, but if it was to happen sometime in the future, how do you feel about it now? And I think you'll find it's different. I think you will. In my experience, they all change because by bringing this out and realizing it's not working anymore, and asking your unconscious mind not to throw away the intention, but to keep the intention, but find a better way, a better emotion, a better set of behaviours, and a better belief. Because for my old belief, I can't do this because I'll get hurt, and feeling hurt for not doing things, there's a conflict. 
But now it's okay. I'm okay. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to die. So let's do it. And by doing that, I can access every bit of ooh, energy. Anything I'll need will come. And, and I'll think about it. Because I know instead of just doing things, I will think about it carefully. And things like that. Well, it's okay to think about it. And then I'll be able to do it. And then I'll be able to do this and do that. Now, you, what you can also do, it in, and I said we start off with a few negatives, but then think about what are the things you've really enjoyed doing, the things that you exceeded at, excelled at. Now, you can pick the easy ones where you just enjoyed doing things and notice the feeling, do exactly the same process. Notice the feeling that you have. If you went back to that memory now, notice the feeling you have. Notice the qualities of it, the modalities and the submodalities. So the qualities and the qualities of those qualities. And then notice what belief did I have right then. Now that might be a belief that would also keep that intention, the old negative intention, or not negative intention, the old intention where you had that negative belief and negative feeling. What would that do if you had that positive belief and that feeling in that other context? may not be 100% right, but I think you'll find it's nearer, nearer the mark. It's better than the old way. And that's all we're doing. We're looking for, for better than the old ways. Because when we do that, we, as in NLP terms, we're loosening your model of the world. We're loosening your unconscious mind's model of the world to say there are other ways. And once your unconscious mind gets to know the other ways, it can then start to explore for even better ways. And then, but you could even go to think, what think of a time when you were going to do something and you really didn't think you're going to be able to do it but you did you surprised yourself by having the wherewithal the the skills to do it and think of the when you go to that memory the feeling did it have a color where is it was it warm was it cold did it have a temperature did it resonate did it pulse did it vibrate did it expand did it shrink what did it do did it move anyway what was the feelings there? What belief did you have about yourself that made that feeling so? And then go, hey, what would happen if I had that feeling and that belief in any of those old contexts? Also, knowing that, you can even think about things that you're planning on doing and going, well, what would happen if I had this feeling and this belief, this positive feeling, this positive belief in this context, this new context in the future? How would that be? Now, to me, there is no, there's only one answer, isn't it? It's going to be better. And what would happen, you could ask yourself, what would happen if you, my unconscious mind, took that on and made it even better? Made it even better than that last time. Access all my skills, all my be wonderful behaviors, wonderful learnings, every positive experience, and, and put it in a way that was just right to, to exceed. What would that be like? And by just simply asking those type of questions, your unconscious mind has to search for that answer. Not the ones of what happens if it goes all wrong. Because again, your unconscious mind will search for that answer. But you're saying, what would it be like if I used all those skills? Or could you, if you found better skills, better emotions, better behaviors, a more powerful, empowering belief, what would that be like if you did that? Would I still be super safe? Would I still be whatever, that intention? And by asking that question, and not, sometimes you don't even have to answer it. Just let your unconscious mind answer it, because you'll start working on that goal, start working on that new thing, without working on it, as it were. But the thing I really want to say is, once you've done all of that, and you start to find those new beliefs, and you start working in these new ways, I'd love you to pause. Pause in the middle. Pause at the end and thank your unconscious mind for actually doing this. Because when you say thank you and you feel that feeling of gratitude, it's like saying to your unconscious mind, more of this please. And your unconscious mind is that selfless server. Just needs to know the direction you want to go. Needs to know the direction you want to feel. That's all we're doing. And then you become aligned, congruent. Consciously and unconsciously, and everywhere else. 
now we are changing the world because we're changing you to be the one, the person you want to be. Be the change that you want to be. And then you're affecting everyone else because you're being that, that example of positivity, as it were. But it's not just positivity for positive sake or just being happy, happy, happy. You're being happy for a reason because you're creating it. You're being, you know, have that wonderful high self-esteem and showing it because you're creating it. And you create, well, sometimes you're not even creating it, you're just letting it out, letting the real you out. Because I believe we've all got this inside us. We just need to tap into it and, and let our unconscious mind express it into the real world. And that's when I say we'll never know how far the ripples of change will go. So, what have, what have we talked about today? We've talked about, I guess, those I beliefs. I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, or, or I'm driven. I'm okay, it's okay. I'm not strong enough. We've talked about every one of those begins with an I, their identity. We've talked about each one has a positive intention and how we want to hold on to that positive intention, whether it's connected to a negative belief, negative feeling or a positive feeling. The intentions are positive. We just need to access the right skills, the right belief, the right emotion, the right, be- right everything to support that intention. We talked about where it all comes from, I guess. The noise, your experiences, those early days when we were just a sponge. And notice how the world's changing. And also, we've, we know that a belief can be changed in an instant for the better. And also notice if, it, if there's one which is negative, change it again. Loosen your model of the world. Allow those new positive beliefs to, to come forward and show you the way. And then we talked about writing them down and just showing how this could be better. Getting your unconscious mind to find a better way. Your better way. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Well, I think I've given you a great deal of food for thought. It's even made me start thinking again. So I'm sure we're going to be heading back here and doing this type of stuff. I'm even going to I'm thinking on the next um, couple of podcasts to go through something which is quite different as well. This is like a heads up to to the future, about giving you something that we can actually do to anchor into your unconscious mind the things that you're learning in here. So I'm doing the recaps now, but get you to to anchor in how you can learn the things you really learn. But anyway, that's something for the future, something I've got to play around with and you know we'll experiment together. If you enjoyed this, please do let me know. Do let me know, please. Uh, you know the email address, it's feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. I'd love to know your takeaways. I'd love to know the effect that just writing some of these down and how it changed your life for the better and the effect of that changing your life for the better. I'd love to know the type of beliefs you, you started with and the beliefs you changed to. It would be awesome if you did that. So feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com and everything else. I mean, please share. Pay it forward if you would. Share it to your friends because all these things, even though, you know, even I've missed it occasionally. I've seen somebody and I didn't didn't necessarily pick up that they were going through a bad time because sometimes we can hide things really well. And just by giving them the opportunity to listen to things like this can change their lives, can get them to have maybe have a dialogue with you, but certainly have a dialogue with themselves and a dialogue with me. And then we can share this around. You know, this integrated field of learning is just going to get bigger and stronger and more vibrant as our community grows. Because it is growing. Slowly but surely, it is growing. And you're part of that. And you're a creator of that. So I'm really grateful for that. Thank you. So there you go. Let's have more fun than we can stand. Because it's okay, isn't it? Because I'm okay. We're going to have fun. Enjoy until the next time. See you soon. So before you go, we talked about sharing. If you would share this, that would be awesome. Share this podcast. Share the name of this podcast. Tell people just to search for either Paul Clough or Personal Development Unplugged. Find it in the podcast uh, uh, app and all that stuff. That would be awesome if you could. If you could subscribe on the platform that you listen to this uh, podcast on, that would be even awesomer or as awesome because that does allow this uh, podcast to be seen by other people too. 
you know they see it in their their notes and their, their you might be interested in this type now that would be great because it, it would mean growing this this uh, personal development unplugged podcast in breaking these difficult subjects down into simple ways that we can change and creating a better life for you me everyone we come to remember those hypnosis tracks there's nearly 40 of them now and i want to start increasing them now because i've got the new microphone remember and all you have to do is go to paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast pop your email in so i have to do it that way because i want to keep it so it's only for you and they're all there for you you can search through them find them easy you can download them and you'll even get a little email to say here's a new one here's something different maybe a free gift or a little gift of hypnosis or an nlp process there you go so please do that tell people about the hypnosis tell people about the podcast and subscribe and have fun anyway there you go bye bye now Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.